The masks within Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom allow us to apply strategic edits in a variety of ways. There's very few rights or wrongs with this, but for landscape photographers, I think a lot of their strategic editing will be in the sky. But it's fortunate that one of the masks is Select Sky. Having said that, I very rarely use it. It's normally because I want to push those sliders a little further than the Select Sky mask will allow me. Let me show you what I mean. I've done some basic edits on this image, but the sky is obviously the weakness. Let's go to our masks and we'll select the sky. Now editing has to be balanced because our eye and brain soon sends alarm signals when something just doesn't look quite right. So here I'm going to bring down the highlights. Doesn't make a great deal of difference, but it helps a bit. But then the exposure. And as soon as I do, we can see a problem. If I go a little too far, then of course we can see it absolutely crystal clear. So if I wanted to use that sky mask here, you can see I can't make a great deal of difference to the sky before it becomes obvious. Now I find in these circumstances, using gradient masks is much more efficient, looks better and gives me more control. Now, as you can see here, I've deleted that mask and I've gone back to my starting point, just a little bit of global editing done. So let me go back to my masks because the mask I want here is the linear gradient. Now I'm going to drag it down from about the middle downwards. Why am I starting there and not right at the top? Because I want a greater effect at the top. So if I start about here, but I allow that graduation to just peter out around the horizon, we're going to get a much better result. Let me do exactly the same as I did with the Select Sky. I brought down the highlights. Let me touch the V key and we'll get rid of that bounding box as well. But now I can bring down the sky and it doesn't look unnatural. It's looking okay. I may decide at this point to tweak maybe the temperature a little bit if I felt it was appropriate and make other changes. Maybe drop the blacks down a little bit, the whites up a little bit. These are all personal changes, but you can clearly see that I can now move my exposure quite a lot further than I would have been able to do with that select sky. And of course, the real beauty here, if I touch the V key, once I've got all of the changes in that I think are appropriate, I can move this and I can judge just about perfectly where it needs to be to get the effect that I'm looking for. But better than that, I can then balance the bottom of my image a lot better with the top by applying a second gradient mask. Now I'm going to use a shortcut key for this, G. Very easy to remember. Now I'm clicking right at the top and just bringing it down to about there. Now we can go over to the right hand side and we can do what we did before. I can drop the top of that sky down. I can tweak the blacks down a little bit, whites up. Just give a little bit more contrast there. Do my final tweaks. I'll go back to the normal settings here so we get rid of the bounding box. Now you can see we've got a sky at the top, which is much better in balance with the base of the image, done pretty quickly with two gradient masks. Now here I have another example image, and what I've done here, I have used the sky mask. There you can see it. But because I want to lean on the sliders quite heavily with the exposure, bring down the highlights, you can start to see a little bit of ghosting around the top. Now we could cure that with a gradient, making maybe one or two gradients. And even now I'd like to put a stronger gradient right at the top. But of course we can also try another tack here. Let's subtract a little bit from the edge along here. 
Now we can do this, maybe we could use a gradient for that, but I'm going to suggest a brush. Because I want my flow to be very low, I want my brush to be very big, and all I can do here is just alleviate that edge a little bit. I mean, we're effectively doing what I did before by using gradients. Maybe just alleviating any hint that we've got a halo along the edge. But of course, I'm going to hit the G key. Click and drag right at the top, because even now I'd like to put a little bit more darkness there, maybe a little bit more blue, just to balance that top with the bottom a little better. Our images need tonal balance. Not always easy to describe, but we tend to know it when we see it. I'll see you next time.